of this moment we are shoveling to make room for our park protest our peaceful park protest against gun violence um we know this is a lot of work obviously but we definitely think it's worth it um due to recent tragedies and just kind of the stricken plague of mass shootings that we've had in america we hope that people will come to really just educate themselves and problem solve with us. And then when the Parkland shooting happened, we knew and we saw the nationwide walkouts, we knew that it was something that we needed to do. And as a group and as a school, it was something that we felt very strongly about that we needed to take action. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? Yeah, yeah it's absolutely amazing. <laughs> I just go, up, I mean, it's just this great Up front steam. sediment. Yes. Yep. Thank you so much for being here today to join us in conversation and democracy and change. Uh, MASA, the Mount Ave Student Activism Club, um, has organized this event and we are so happy to see you all here supporting us and all the victims of the mass shootings that have occurred in this country. We hope to educate and spark more discussion about this issue. First, we will hear from Chloe Lyons, a co-founder of MASA. Please give it up for Chloe! Hi everyone! Okay, so I just have a little intro speech to start us off. So first off, I would like to welcome and thank every community member who took the time out of their busy days, every student who came here despite it being a Saturday morning, <laughs> and <laughs> if this was safe, um, oh, 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 no. right. and, right. and, <laughs> and every massive member who took oh, hours and hours to tirelessly research, organize, and contact people, they really found their voices through these past couple weeks. This day would not have been possible without every single one of you. The other day, it was the year anniversary of the idea for our club, MASA, Mount Abe Student Activism. It was not that long ago that Maddie, Molly, and I were sitting on a bookstore floor in Barrie talking about how there are a lot of injustices in the world and not a lot of conversations about them. A deranged student named Nicholas Cruz murdered 17 students and teachers at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida on February 14, 2018. Despite the horrendous nature of this specific injustice, we did not expect the world to have a conversation. But what we proudly witnessed was just the contrary. As of right now, my idol is the collective Parkland student body. Before, my idol was a poet named Neil Hilborn, who mainly writes about his struggles with bipolar disorder. I believe the reason I admire him so much was because he took something so personal and so hard to deal with and surrendered it so other people could use it and potentially help themselves. But isn't that exactly what these students have done? Although this event is about our local students and community members, we want to acknowledge the reason that this injustice was not hushed like similar ones. Sutherland Springs, Texas, 26 killed, 20 injured. Sandy Hook, 28 killed, 20 of whom were children between the ages of six and seven, two wounded. Virginia Tech Campus, 33 killed, 17 wounded. Orlando Nightclub, 49 killed, 58 wounded. Las Vegas Concert, 58 killed, 515 wounded. If we could just take a moment of silence to honor these lives. Thank you. The Parkland kids are the reason we are here, having a conversation, problem solving. As a part of MASA, we are exponentially grateful that you are all here and it is my hope that you could give the real thanks to the Parkland students by helping us figure out how we can make sure this happens never again. Thank you, Chloe. <laughs> May Peterson, a member of MASA, and she will explain the petitions we have here today. Alrighty, so 
as a NASA group, we wanted to come up with how we felt and the actions that we wanted to take and the specific message that we wanted to get across. So as written by Eli Rickner, we came up with a petition for what we felt really needed to happen. So I'm gonna read that petition to you. Oh boy. <laughs> Mass shootings continue to threaten Americans' rights to tranquility and general welfare in our country. As members of the United States public school system, we wish to promote and present gun safety reform to our state and national legislation. The Mount Abe Student Activism Club wishes to advocate for enhanced universal background checks for all gun sales, increased enforcement of disarmament of felon gun laws, and the impl implementation of firearm safety courses, such as hunting safety courses for all gun purchasers. By signing this petition for gun safety reform, you are voicing your support for these policies that will, that will be given to our state and national representatives. NASA thanks everyone for their support of our movement and your help in stopping such tragedies from occurring ever again. So this petition will be over at the farthest table on the left and it, they, you, it is available to be signed and we will take this and um, bring it to our legislation and this as a group is the change we're trying to make. Um, we have three other petitions here today for you too. These are from change.org. Some of them started from uh, victims of the Parkland student, uh, shooting. Um, we just feel um, petitions are a huge part of taking political action. It's a solid way to show the lawmakers how the people really feel about certain bills or actions being taken and not taken. Um, I know most of us are here because we want to show our community and our lawmakers that we demand change. So uh, we have found some credible petitions from change.org, like I said, that we would love for you to sign if you want to support their messages. They are online petitions, so by signing them, so by signing your name at the petition table, you are giving us permission to upload your name electronically. So we have the following petitions. The first petition was started by Anisha Sarapali, a Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School student and a close friend to one of the teenagers killed in the recent mass shootings. In her words, Nick Cruz killed 17 people, some who were freshmen just starting their second semester of high school, others seniors who just committed to their colleges of their dreams. He took away their hopes and aspirations. All she asks is for our lawmakers to stand up to the NRA and to pass common sense gun control. Sign this petition to show that you demand the same. This second petition was started by a Connecticut high school student, Lane Murdoch. Her petition reads, on Friday, April 20th, the 19th anniversary of the Columbine shooting, I propose a national high school student walkout. Walk out of school, wear orange, and protest online in your communities. Sign the petition if you pledge to do so. Nothing has changed since Columbine. Let us start a movement le that lets the government know that th it's the time for change is now. Hashtag national school walkout. So this is just for students, but students, if you are planning on walking out on April 20th, it's a, this is a petition to sign to show your support for that. The third, started by Sarah Clements, the daughter of a Sandy Hook teacher survivor, calls to lift the ban of federal gun research. In 1996, the Dickey Amendment made it so federal dollars could not be used in the promotion or ad advocacy of gun control. In turn, restricting the CDC from researching the effects and causes of gun violence in the United States. This information could be critical in finding the right solution for the large amounts of gun violence we see today. Join Sarah in calling on Congress and the CDC to resume studying the causes and impacts of gun violence. So, like I said before, the forest table on the left you can sign these three petitions and we will upload your names and take action with the support that you give us. Thank you. Um, next up, Casey Ober is going to read an original poem um, that was created in light of the recent shooting of Parkland. Thank you, Chloe. Thank you, Maddie. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, 
I've participated in some poetry out loud and I've felt pretty passionate about this movement and I decided to express my feelings through poetry. So this is a poem uh, that I wrote called Don't Tell Me That. When you tell me that guns don't kill people, people kill people, I want to say to you that sure, a person can kill a person, but it was a gun that killed over 2,000 lives in the past three months. It was a gun that killed millions of people last year, and it was a gun that killed 17 more lives. So don't tell me that guns don't kill people. Don't tell me that guns protect you against the very thing that you hold in your hand because hate can't trump hate like fire can't fight fire and adding two negatives can never equal a positive. If you tell me that a law isn't going to change anything, then I ask you to reread your constitution because the right to bear arms changed something. If you tell me that outlying guns isn't going to solve everything, I will say to you, no. It's not going to solve everything. I never said it was going to solve everything. No one ever said it was going to solve everything. I say I love you to my parents whenever I walk out the door because my school could be next. Their office could be next. We all could be next. I say I love you every chance I get because guns do kill people. Thank you. Okay, thank you for listening to um, the first part of what we have to say. So we have a lot of activities and things planned for you, and I'm going to introduce them, and then we're going to reconvene. And sometime after, you know, we've let everybody have a look at the different tables and have discussions with everybody and ask questions to us and other people that I'm going to introduce right now. So we have Representative Fred Baser. Fred would love to talk to you about, um, you know, our law. Um, we also have Representative Dave Sharp. Dave, we just, yep. Go students! Um, we also, at the Addison County Democrats table, have Linda, Andr Linda Andrews and Paul Florenza. shooting that and we'd love to read a little bit about them so that we can all understand that they were people and not just another number. Helena Ramsey, 17. In the moments before her death, Helena saved the life of her friend. Instead of thinking about herself, she handed her friend a book to hold up. This protected her from the gunshots, but Helena did not make it. She was a music lover and had a funny, crazy attitude. Helena was kind and selfless, and she showed this in many ways. She will be missed greatly, and her sacrifice will never be forgotten. Joaquin Oliver, 17. Joaquin loved Dwayne Wade so much that he was buried in his jersey. In response, Wade dedicated this whole season to Joaquin. Joaquin was a dreamer. He was a fighter. He loved sports. He loved music. And I'm sure that if he had the good fortune of being a survivor, he would be the first one joining the fight led by these young people, says his dad, Manuel Oliver. 
Car Carmen Shentrup was 16. Carmen was shot and killed one week before her birthday. She was a National Merit finalist. Never knew this. As the letter arrived at her house the day that she died. Carmen was also accepted to the University of Florida Honors Program. She was playful and fun, but also mature beyond her years. Peter Wang, 15. Peter was shot and killed while holding a classroom door open, letting his fellow classmates to safety and sacrificing his life. Peter spoke both English and Chinese and was described as funny, caring, and selfless. Peter will be missed greatly and his sacrifice will never be forgotten. Nicholas Gore, 17. Nicholas was a swimmer, a brother, and a good friend. He had recently committed to University of Indianapolis, where he planned to continue his swimming career. He was, a, he was very positive and a very cheerful, cheerful person, said the teammate. He was always trying to encourage people to push themselves to the limit. He was very dedicated and determined in swimming, and he was a very kind person. <coughs> Jamie Guttenberg, 14. Jamie was a freshman at Stoneland Douglas High School. She was a dancer since she was two years old and she was very passionate about it. She was described as open, care, as an open, caring, giving person and she always had a smile on her face. Everyone who met her loved her. Her brother also attends the high school and he survived. In honor of Jamie, dancers are wearing orange ribbons and there are trending hashtags. Hashtag orange ribbons for Jamie and hashtag we dance for Parkland. Gina Montalto. Gina Montalto. 14. Gina was a dancer and an illustrator. She is described as a go with the flow kind of person, as well as being incredibly kind and caring. <coughs> she loved to read and play soccer and flag football. Gina was also known to love the color guard and took part in a Girl Scout troop, as well as doing volunteer work with kids. Meadow Pollock, 18. Meadow was described as having a smile like sunshine. Meadow's father is creating a playground that will be dedicated to his daughter. I see my daughter's picture in my head every second of the day. That's what's empowering me to move forward, he said. Meadow was known for her humor and good nature, and she will be missed. Alex Schachter, 14. Alex played baritone in the school marching band and trombone in the orchestra. He had three siblings and attended Eagles Landing Camp and Camp Echo, which he loved. Last year, the Eagle Regiment Marching Band, which Alex was a part of, won the state championship in Tampa. He was described as a sweetheart of a kid and will be missed by many. Elena Petty, 14. Elena was known to help others. When Hurricane Irma devastated parts of Florida, she volunteered and helped clean homes. She was also part of the school's Junior Reserve Officers Training Corps. Elena was also very active in her Mormon church and is described as lighthearted and spirited. Luke Hoyer, age 15. Luke was a freshman at Stoneman Douglas. He was... He loved football, video games, and chicken nuggets. He was a happy-go-lucky kid, and his cousin Grant Cox describes him as an amazing, amazing individual, always happy, always smiling. His smile was contagious, and so was his laugh. Carol Algren, 14. Carol loved Irish dance, surfing, and gymnastics, says Kara's aunt, Lindsay Fontana. I had to tell my eight-year-old daughters that their sweet cousin Kara was killed in the shooting at Stoneman Douglas High School yesterday. We are absolutely gutted. Kara was 14 years old, she was an excellent student, she left the beach, and she loved our girls. We really, as students, um, really just want to say that we appreciate all your help in trying to get laws passed so that we can never have something like this happen again. It's mutual.
there once was a boy. He knew soon that everyone would know his name and see his face on their televisions. What he didn't know was what he was doing. Drowning in his own abstract version of reality, plagued by mental illness and chaos. His bed wasn't made, he skipped breakfast, and he loaded his gun. The bullets shiny and clean. He left for school and didn't return home. There once was a girl. Her phone lit up in AP English, and what she read made her sick to her stomach. Her automatic news updates told her 17 had died in Florida at the hands of yet another mass shooter. Days passed, and for once, the notifications did not stop. Podcast after podcast, news story after news story, interview after interview, her generation was taking a stand, and she thought, you know, I can too. There is a girl addressing her community, only asking that they listen and ask themselves, what can we do? This girl realizes that there is not one specific reason or one specific solution, but there is a starting point. The coming together of her classmates, her community and her nation. People must be willing to stand for all of America. For to that, for to that, open doors, no more wars. For to that, for to that, open doors, no more wars. Day one in Beirut, Paris day two. Day three may be wherever you or I may be. Does that mean we should be afraid? Tell foreign people to keep away? Please, let's be the change. Fear leads astray, love leads the way. I dream and believe in peaceful days. Fear leads astray, love leads the way. I dream and believe in peaceful days. And I just want to let 17 year olds know that if you will be 18 in time for the November election that's coming up, that you are eligible to vote, register to vote now, and you would also be eligible to vote in the primary election in August. I'm sorry I haven't memorized the date of the November election. Paul, do you know it? November. No, it's I the first it's Tuesday in November, generally. Um, haven't thought that far ahead yet. But um, you can look it up, and if you if you will be 18 by then, but you're not 18 now, now is the time you can register to vote and be ready to go when when the next election comes along. So I'm happy to help you with that. You can also do it online. Go to the Vermont Secretary of State website, and there's an online voter registration page for Vermont. Hi, I'm Paul from Lincoln. I, these kids are so amazing, so articulate, so well organized, so thoughtful, so caring. I wanted to say thank you to the parents and to the teachers who have helped them grow. It's really amazing. I can remember when I was their age, I was bumbling. <laughs> I didn't have a clue, so thank you. Scott Beckwith, Mount Abraham, thank you all for being here. I'm very proud of these kids. Um, you know, we teach a civics class at Mount Abraham called Age of Legality, and we encourage them to actually think about their cultural capital and what we can do to have their voices be heard. This demographic, for the first time in many years, is standing up and actually speaking out. It's so encouraging. I'm so proud of you. I am grateful for this moment, and I just hope that you don't lose the momentum. Stay with this, you guys. This is so vitally important. Please. Okay. <laughs> My name is Patty Heatherly, a uh, former teacher. Uh, I so grateful to all the students and all that you've done and continue to do. This is what I call success to gather us together. There's a prayer a Buddhist saying, may the compassionate spirit of love grow within us so we may complete 
the enlightening path. So thank you for enlightening us. Um, I'm a student at Mount Abraham and I would just, I want to say, uh, I want to challenge all the students and all the adults to have those difficult conversations and talk about it because nothing is going to change and nothing is going to get better if we don't have those hard conversations and talk about our what we feel and how things can get better. We hope this has brought new ideas and real change, and I hope all ideas were heard today, and from here we can work together to create a solution. NASA will be sending any artwork and thoughts to Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High, and during our petitions to change.org, talking to our legislators and seeing what our next move will be. Now, I can't see with tears in my eyes. <laughs> um, May has a new thing. <laughs> the play people would like to sing a song for us, so if you guys yes. want to come up here, we would love to hear Make a difference, it's not too late.